Hi there, Cert 2 students. Okay, so today what we're going to do is a padded compression bandage. Now we did this in class, but this is um, another way to basically practice to watch this one. So basically this is going to be used when you've got a wound that's bleeding excessively. So you do need to recognise when a wound is bleeding excessively and that this can basically help stop the bleeding. So, I mean, in these cases, you are going to be rushing to the vet clinic, but if you do have a first aid kit and some, you know, sort of materials you can improvise on those, you can certainly help stop the bleeding before you get to the vet clinic. So, first of all, you do need to basically apply a padded bandage over the wound. Now, if you have some sort of dressing, that's great. It needs to be clean and preferably non-stick. So what we were using in class was melalin. Now this one, remember we talked about there's two sides. There's a non-stick side, so that's great for wounds. So you can certainly use that. But there's not always this around, so you might have to use something like clean gauze. Obviously this would stick to the wound, which is not preferable, but you know, it, it's certainly on the short term and you don't you know, that can come off quite easily. We wouldn't recommend for you to use something like cotton wool because the fibres, you can see those fibres, would probably get into that wound, make it harder to clean out. So in this case, we will use melalin, okay? Shiny side down, as we said. When you put it on the wound, so let's pretend Mr Puma here has a wound here. Basically what we're doing is shiny side down over the wound and preferably, if it was a small wound, you would want this to actually cover the whole wound, okay? And about three centimetres on each side, if possible. So we put the melanin on. Now, obviously this will absorb some of the blood, but if you do have an extra something to, as an absorptive material like cotton wool, then you can certainly use this. You're not always gonna have this, but if you do have this in a first aid kit, this is great because it will help basically absorb the blood. It's not going to do much though. As you can see, it doesn't, it kind of ricks quite easily. So you're not going to be able to actually apply a lot of pressure with this one. So this is just for extra absorption. So what we do is we start from the pore end, if at all possible. As we said, bandaging the entire pore is certainly good because it will actually stop that pore from swelling up. So conventionally, it is best if you do do the whole pore, even if the pore itself is not affected. So we do the pore, which is the tricky, trickiest part. And once we start going up the leg, as we talked about, it is good to overlap. That will prevent the bandage from sticking. So about 50% overlap is fantastic if you can manage that. So as you see, it's overlap overlap and as we go up we want to entire cover the entire melon we don't want the melon sticking out so up the leg and then this one we can actually just rip rip off okay next layer is something that's going to hold this in place and actually be a little bit more elastic so that we can actually apply some pressure. So that would be something like a conforming gauze bandage. This is quite important. This is the one that's actually going to help stop the ooze. Now, again, you might not have this available, so that means that you might have to get a little bit, you know, um, innovative, maybe use something like torn up sheets, um, maybe torn up tea towels, something like that, and you could tie that around quite tightly. So, next layer, we open this one, it's the conforming gauze, you can see there's a nice stretch. So this one, again, starting from the pore, and this time you want to go around and you want to make sure you're putting a bit of pressure, this is going to stop the bleeding or help slow it down. So around and again overlapping, overlapping 
And again, you're not going to stop just here, okay? It's, this cotton wool is going to be sticking out. Another layer, about three centimetres over, so that you can get a nice overlap there, and that will help stop the bandage from slipping. So that's quite important. Scissors, important for this one. It won't rip. And there we go. You can see there's firm and even pressure, okay? There's no puckering or anything like that, and that makes the bandage quite neat. Now, what you can see is this, you know, if you left it like this, it would slip. So final layer, if you have something, would be something that sticks to itself, an adhesive, what we call bandage. There's two main types, wrap it, okay, cohesive non-woven bandage, also known as vet wrap. If you have some of this, this is great to use and you saw how pliable it was and it's quite easy. Otherwise, this is the other common one, elastic adhesive bandage. It's also known as elastoplast. It's good, um, not as easy and sort of malleable as the other one, but certainly it will um, stick to the animal skin, so that does help you know, stop it from slipping, but harder to get off. So if you have vet wrap, that's fantastic. You can see how easy that is to use. It sticks to itself. Again, starting from the paw end. This time, be very careful you don't go too tight, because as we spoke about, you've already done one layer, which is going to help stop the bleeding. This one, don't go too tight, because this can cause too much compression and make it quite uncomfortable. So again, overlapping, if you can about 50%, overlapping, and final layer, again, you want to make sure there's a bit of overlap up the leg, a bit further up. Okay. And this one, it's great because you can actually tear again without having to use scissors. And that sticks to itself, which is great. You can see again, nice even pressure, neat bandage. So if you can do this, this is great. It will help basically slow down the bleeding, which is great. What we talked about is that if you see that the blood is seeping through the bandage, do not cut it off and start again. Just apply an extra absorbent layer. So if you have more cotton wool, again, another layer of cotton wool all the way up the way you did before and more vet wrap to keep it in place. So do not remove it. The vet can do that once you get to the clinic. So this is a good way to help in first aid situations, help stop the bleeding to some extent, slow down the bleeding until you get to the vet clinic. Okay, good luck guys. See you soon. Bye.